Well, good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the IT's 2022 Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards. We're delighted that you can all join us this evening to recognise and celebrate the work of some truly talented young women engineers. Uh, this year's finalists work in a variety of important and exciting areas of engineering, from healthcare and medicine to robotics and keeping people safe. The fantastic ambassadors for industry and role models for the next generation. Can you all join me in welcoming tonight's finalists and congratulating them on reaching this stage of the competition? <laughs> the Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards have been celebrating women working in modern engineering for more than 40 years now and aim to help change the perception that engineering is predominantly a career for men by banishing outdated engineering stereotypes of hard hats and greasy hands. These awards are incredibly important in recognising and promoting engineering as a creative, diverse and exciting career to young women and girls. Engineering is in absolutely everything that we do. It's a fantastic profession that can be life or even world changing and we want more young people to see and appreciate that. We're tremendously proud to celebrate women in modern engineering who are vital in helping to change the perception of our profession and raise the profile of engineers among young people, parents, teachers, the media and government. I think it's time we meet these incredible women and start this year's ceremony. Again, a very warm welcome and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. And now the person you're really waiting for. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now more than ever, it is important that we acknowledge and celebrate women thriving in STEM. Growing up, I wasn't really exposed to any inspiring figures in engineering. That's why we need to be out there encouraging more young females to break those boundaries and stereotypes. I've always loved the fulfillment that I get from being able to enrich other people's lives with the help that I can give them. When I was at school, I never imagined myself where I am today. I am proud to be a young female engineer. Please welcome to the stage your host for this evening, Oti Mabusi. <laughs> In case you were wondering, all of that was definitely planned. <laughs> we rehearsed it exactly like that. Um, and welcome to the IET's Young Woman Engineer of the Year Awards. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, whether you're here with us in London or you're watching from home. It is such a pleasure to be here with you all tonight to celebrate and recognize the achievements of some outstanding women engineers. Tonight, we're going to get to know this year's incredible finalists and find out how they're making a difference in the world. We'll hear from our fantastic guest speaker, Dr. Nikke for the Lion. Yeah! <laughs> and catch up with last year's Young Woman Engineer of the Year, Dr. Kira McGrath. Now we'll be finding out what she's been up to since she's won. But before we begin and announce this year's award winners, can I please ask you to get involved on Twitter by using the hashtag IETYWE. Yes, tweet away, people. Enjoy that. Uh, we cannot wait to see all your pictures and posts throughout the night. Now, I know most of you might be thinking, why is Oti Mabuse standing up here tonight talking about us dressed like a glitter ball? <laughs> I'd like to let you know I actually come from a family of female engineers, with most of my cousin being electrical engineers. My middle sister is a mechanical engineer, and I myself am a civil engineer. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
Engineering has always been a part of my life since being a young girl in South Africa. And for me, it is the future. It has been the past. I think without engineers, the world would not move forward. We need more engineers. And even more than that, we need more young female engineers. So I think this night is incredible. I hope you enjoy yourselves. And thank you for having me as a host tonight. So, enough about me. It's now time to meet our first finalist, Ama from Pog. Although one in two of us will be diagnosed with cancer in our lifetimes, cancer death rates are falling. Through a mix of technology, medical treatment and early detection, hospitals are reducing the number of deaths and improving the chances of survival for those diagnosed. But while cancer death rates are falling, chemotherapy is not without its side effects. One of the possible side effects is a suppression of the immune system. As a result of this, even a mild illness can put patients at risk of developing a condition called neutropenic sepsis. Neutropenia is a lowering of your white blood cell count and sepsis is an infection that most people commonly know. However, a combination of the two can be fatal. This condition prematurely takes tens of thousands of lives and costs healthcare systems billions. However, it doesn't have to be this way. I'm currently leading and managing engineering teams in the development of a low-cost portable device that helps identify cancer patients who are at risk of neutropenic sepsis. This device has the potential to save thousands of lives, free up valuable healthcare resources and make patients' well-being easier, simpler and better. Wow, what incredible work Ama is doing to improve people's lives and make a real difference. I think we should go straight into the next video and meet our second finalist, Constance Rudman. We are on the precipice of a new era in automotive engineering. Autonomy and electrification are changing everything and it's challenging companies to provide new and exciting experiences for their customers. The assisted driving cars of tomorrow will be faced with new everyday situations like a lack of eye contact with the driver. This is where new communicative and interactive lighting comes into play. Ambient lighting intensifies spatial perception and it makes drivers feel safer. This is going to help build trust in the autonomous driving cars of the future. When I was at school, I never imagined myself where I am today. I knew I was good at art and that I enjoyed physics and eventually I understood that a combination like this lends itself to design and engineering. Studying applied engineering allows me to combine both of these skills in a way that really makes a difference. I felt very pushed to attend university after sixth form and there was little to no support for those of us that didn't want to go down that route. In reality, there is a world of opportunities outside of university. And as a degree apprentice, I feel very strongly about opening up the conversation about alternatives and the benefits of apprenticeships. Through my work as a STEM ambassador, I'm helping to inspire future talent and shape the work experiences here at Jaguar Land Rover. I want to help change the narrative that I was faced with at school. It is important to show other young women that working in a male-dominated industry is not only totally possible, but an amazing opportunity to have your voice heard. I am proud to be a young female engineer, and I am excited to see what the future holds. Yeah. Wow, Constance, thank you so much. You have such an exciting job. My name Range Rover. Hello, Range Rover. <laughs> now it's over to our fantastic guest speaker for the evening. This incredible woman is the co-finder of the AFBE UK, a not-for-profit organization which aims to promote higher education amongst people from ethnically minoritized groups in the UK. She is a chartered electronics engineer, leading a team of engineers in a variety of projects across the globe, as well as a fellow of the IET, an honorary fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering. And I'm telling you, that was such a mouthful to say. There is nothing that this woman cannot do. Everybody, please, can we give a massive round of applause?
of applause for Dr. Nick Hay for Lion. <laughs> Hello everyone, good evening. Huh? I'm just in awe of... <laughs> um, so, thank you for this opportunity. I'm absolutely delighted to be speaking to you this evening. I am a technical director at WSP. I always wonder how many people know what WSP is, but a show of hands. Thank you. Ah, oh, that's good. Um, and I'm also the co-founder of the Association for Black and Minority Ethnic Engineers UK, an organisation I founded alongside my brother, Dr. Ollie for Lyon, who I believe is on his way here. <laughs> so I'm here to share lessons I'm learning on my journey as an engineer and co-founder. But before I do that, can we just congratulate the young, gifted female engineers tonight? Can we just... You truly are a guarantee of the future of our sector. You guys rock, absolutely. Lao Tzu is often quoted as having said that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Well, as a young girl, I took a step outside the front porch. I'd always wondered how the little people got into that box in the living room called a TV. The fact that those little people seem to be influenced by a long pole outside the house, called an antenna, or as my dad would say, aerial, was what aroused my curiosity the most and made me step outside. Now that was the start of my journey. The path to do what I do today in radio communications began with an interest in television. It eventually brought me into an industry that daily saves lives and transforms communities. But this industry did not seem to attract or retain people that look like me. There were few role models of colour to look up to, and as I started to work as an engineer, the reason for the underrepresentation became clear. Some of the experiences both my brother and I had at the start of our careers would have been enough to justify leaving the sector altogether. But we stayed the course, and in 2007, at a time when diversity wasn't so sexy, I and Dr. Ollie Flyon embarked on a journey that created AFBE UK, a national organisation with members all around the UK and some across the world. This was another step on my journey. So my talk today, and I've got some, I'm sure you wonder what three things actually mean, yeah. So my talk today is based on lessons I've learned at AFBE, but in line with my love of TV, and particularly of Sesame Street, <laughs> yeah. Today's talk is brought to you by the letters I, E, T, <laughs> and by the number three. So you all are going to help me give this talk tonight by calling out the letters. Is that okay? Yeah. So what's the, what's, what's the first letter? I. I stands for intentional, by which I mean something performed with awareness and purposeful effort. We had to be intentional in a context in which it often felt as if we were swimming against the tide. Attending an engineering networking event and talking about race and ethnicity was a way to kill a conversation and clear the room. It was slightly easier to talk about being female in engineering, so I did both. It is this awareness of purpose that has fueled our passion and does so to this day. So be intentional about your purpose. What's the next letter? Do we remember? E. e, wonderful. E stands for expectation, by which I mean a strong belief that something will happen 
or the act of anticipation. The English poet Alexander Pope said, blessed is he who expects nothing, for he shall never be disappointed. Many women and minorities have been told this verbally or through action, but we all benefit from the expectations of those who came before us. Benefits like work free weekends, suffrage rights, or even the right to be a female engineer or to report your own work all happen because people had expectations. And so I say, have good expectations that are rooted in the desire to enable full self-expression. Have expectations of a better society. The world needs you to expect. They say you're getting too big for your boots. Get bigger boots. <laughs> expect more from your employers, more from your colleagues, and more of yourself. Excellence is rooted in good expectation. Enjoyment often results when expectation and excellence meet. As an industry, the theory of change depends on expectations on inclusion. So have expectations. And what's the next letter? Do we remember? T. T, wonderful. You guys are great, you know. We should, <laughs> we should do this more often. <laughs> T stands for tenacity. I'd like to stand here and claim that everybody got it from day one. I wish I could claim that we had queues lining up to lend their support, but that would be untrue. We faced significant amount of opposition. People were not ready for our message. And even those who, didn't, who did engage often didn't in public. We used to joke that it was like as if they were having an affair with us. As Ollie says, we are glad they're finally making an honest woman out of us. <laughs> when Dr. Ollie set up AFB in Scotland, it presented unique challenges in 2011. Tenacity attitude played a huge part of their success. Against the status quo, the never say die attitude led to the creation of some of AFB's most successful initiatives. Initiatives like Transition, which has a 70% success rate in helping participants secure graduate jobs in industry. Tenacity meant that we continued to work in the face of visible challenges, even when we had to use our personal resources to do this. But for tenacity, metal and spirit, we would have given up many, many times. <coughs> Now, AFB has helped more than 20,000 beneficiaries and supports 2,500 individual members of all ethnicities and over 65 corporations, and the best is still in front of us. So where are you on your journey? Are you just starting out? Are you near the end, looking back at a very modestly successful career? I need you to engage with your younger self and just do one thing. Take the next step. Thank you. Okay, that was such a fantastic speech. My goodness, I'm so motivated now. Well, now it's time to meet another incredible winner, our third finalist, Eneni Bambara Aban. My journey into robotics wasn't linear, and I almost dropped out of university several times. I was faced with a lot of challenges along the way, the biggest being imposter syndrome. Where are the black female robotics engineers? Is this really an industry for me? For me? Post-university, I hoped that the workplace would be different. I've worked in multiple technology sectors, from developing algorithms for self-driving cars to mobile game data analysis for some of the biggest gaming companies in the world. But unfortunately, one thing was consistent. I was the only black engineer in the room. 
I've experienced firsthand how young women like me are discouraged from working in STEM fields. It's no secret that engineering companies are mostly dominated by white cis males. But the reality is, it's hard to be what you can't see. Representation matters. Now more than ever, it is important that we acknowledge and celebrate women thriving in STEM in order to motivate young girls into these industries. Today, I work as a consultant creative technologist helping companies and individuals raise their profile and increase their efficiency through harnessing the power of a range of technologies. No two days are the same and the projects that I create for my clients are varied. From creating interactive paintings with conductive paint that when touched play music, to integrating NFC technology into nails to promote wearable technology. I have a strong passion to demystify and eradicate the negative stereotypes and limiting societal expectations placed on women worldwide that ultimately affect us from pursuing and retaining careers in STEM. We have the facts, we have the figures. It's already been proven that diversity in engineering workforces is essential to business growth and innovation. Besides support at home and in schools being vital, young girls actually need to see young women flourishing in STEM. I hope that through sharing my story, I can encourage and inspire other young women across the globe to be confident, to believe in themselves, and to let their passion for STEM be their strength. nails that was so cool she's, she's like sitting in front she's got the coolest outfit as well has been flashing hello at me the whole can you put your bag up please because maybe they might see that's the only thing i'm looking at her bag has just been saying hello the whole <laughs> so really really great message there and thank you and any it's now time to present our first award of the evening the Gender Diversity Ambassador Award. This is a lifetime achievement award that is presented to a true role model who has championed gender diversity over many, many years. They greatly contribute to breaking down barriers and implement various policies and strategies to help attract and retain women in engineering. Before we announce our winner though, I think it's time that we get to know them a little bit better. The UK Electronic Skills Foundation, or UKSF for short, is a charity, a charitable foundation that's created to help and encourage more young people to get into electronics, to support schools and teachers, to promote electronics to children, and also in, uh, support students when they're at university studying electronics, connecting them with industry, and hopefully creating a talent pipeline to support the UK electronics sector. Lynn was instrumental in getting the initial funding to set up the foundation, also uh, to create the vision for what the foundation should be, and then helping it over the subsequent 10 years to grow. I'm Jane Little. I'm the founder and CEO of Skills4, a specialist diversity and inclusion training provider in the engineering sector. Lynn took a real gamble on me at the start of my career when I was trying to establish skills for as an unknown. She lent me her support, her encouragement and gave me access to her extensive network to help me launch the business. Future focus companies now understand the importance of diversity within our sector. The work that Lynn does is essential in creating role models to attract young female talent to our sector and provide the skills and innovation to safeguard UK engineering. Lynn uses every opportunity, every relationship, and every day to promote women in engineering. So I couldn't wait to leave school. I left after my O-levels, and I secured a job in a very small engineering company, which was really useful. Small companies you get to see from sales all the way to delivery. So it was a great experience. I learned a lot about engineering in that very first job. In a job where I worked with Semta, the report Shaping a Fairer Future came out and engineering was one of those sectors where women had not advanced. So I was lucky I secured some funding to have a project that could address this. Well, I think it's really important. All the research shows that diversity increases productivity, creativity, innovation. So we need more women to be engineers and the whole sector will benefit. 
It means an awful lot to win this Lifetime Achievement Award. It shows that organisations like the IET are making this a priority. And it's not just an award for me, it's an award for all the amazing women who work in engineering. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our 2022 Gender Diversity Ambassador Award winner, Lynn Tompkins. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then, uh, do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say to the people? Well, just it's been a, a wonderful career, and thank you to the UK Electronic Skills Foundation, who do amazing work to inspire girls and young women to be engineers. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for well. Thank you so much. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree, a very deserving winner and a huge congratulations to Lynn. Can we give her one more round of applause, please? Now, I can't believe how many incredible women we have heard from tonight. And we're not even done yet, so buckle down. Let's meet our fourth finalist, Lauren Smith. The UK holds the third largest medical device market in Europe with around 10,000 different devices. That comes as no surprise when roughly 6 million patients are admitted to UK hospitals per year. Medicine advances constantly, and it is heavily reliant on technology and engineering. But as in most industries, this technology needs maintaining. And that's what I do. I keep the tech running, and I maintain the equipment, which ultimately saves lives. Growing up, I wasn't really exposed to any inspiring figures in engineering. It was my dad that inspired me. He overcame his dyslexia and achieved what he wanted to do in engineering. When I lost my dad to pancreatic cancer, it instilled a strong desire in me to be a part of cancer research. I have faced a lot of struggles, and university really wasn't an option for me, and my initial attempts of working in industry and studying, they really didn't work out for me. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I wanted to help people, and I really wanted to make a difference. So, I joined the NHS as a trainee medical engineer. My experiences so far have been incredible. I have the privilege of interacting with so many inspiring people. I get to be a part of the amazing healthcare that the NHS provides, supporting positive patient outcomes by practicing the subject I'm so passionate about and interested by. Engineering is the way forward in healthcare, and we need more bright minds working in our hospitals and for medical device research. Within medical engineering, there are so many opportunities ahead of me. I want to lead innovation in medical technologies. I want to be a part of cancer technology research someday, but I know wherever I take myself, I'm going to make a difference in healthcare and to people. And that's what makes this job so <coughs> special. These videos are so inspiring. Thank you so much, Lauren, for sharing your story. Now it's time to hear from last year's winner and find out what she's been up to since winning the award. Kira is an aerospace system lecturer at the University of Manchester. She carries out engineering research projects in the area of astrodynamics and space mission design, working with industry and policymakers to design space systems that can help support life on Earth. Everybody, please put your hands together for the 2021 Young Woman Engineer of the Award, Dr. Kira McGrath. <laughs> Hello everyone, 
Firstly, thank you so much for being here this evening and the people watching online to celebrate the incredible finalists of our Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award 2022. And thank you also as members of the IET and supporters for giving me the privilege of being your Young Woman Engineer of the Year 2021. It has been an absolute whirlwind of a year. And I'd like to take the opportunity while I'm here to thank my colleagues and my managers at the University of Manchester who have been so supportive the whole way through. Particularly considering I had only been in my job about a week before I contacted the head of department and asked them what the best way to get a film crew onto the roof of the university was. <laughs> but nevertheless, they supported me the whole way through this incredible journey. And when I look back on the award ceremony from last year, almost exactly one year ago today, it feels quite bizarre. <laughs> Getting an award from my work as an engineer was incredibly strange. And when I stood there amongst all of those incredible finalists, I felt sure that there had to have been a mistake. But amidst that sort of feeling of self-doubt, which I'm sure so many of us can relate to, there was a tiny kernel of pride. And as the evening went on and the celebrations grew, that kernel of pride started to grow. Until eventually I saw the award for what it actually was. It was a recognition of the hard work and the dedication that I had poured into my career to date. And so, I hope for all of you finalists here this evening that you can see this evening for what it is, for a celebration of all of your achievements, because you are all so talented, you are all so hardworking and dedicated, you've achieved so much, you're an inspiration, you should be so proud to be here tonight. And when I look back on that night, the other thing that strikes me is that it felt like a culmination. It felt like the end of a journey. And maybe it feels like that for you as well. But what I didn't realize was that it was actually just the beginning. As soon as the award ceremony was over, I was thrown into this whole new world of radio interviews and TV interviews, of stage shows and presentations. And it was absolutely exhilarating. It was so exciting to be able to go out and talk to audiences of all ages about engineering and technology and about my own field of space mission design. But it wasn't long before that feeling of self-doubt started to creep back in. And I started to ask myself, you know, who am I? And what right do I really have to be standing up on national radio and telling my story to the world? And it was right about that time that I got an email. And I still think, looking back on my year, that that was the highlight. And it wasn't the only message like this that I got, but it was the first one. And it came at a time when I really needed to hear it. And it was a message that came from a young girl in year 10 who was really passionate about science and maths. And she said to me in this email that seeing me win the Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award made her believe that she could have even grander ambitions for her own career in the future. And I just thought, how incredible is that? And it was in that moment that I realized how important it really is all of the work that all of us in the room here do. How important it is to go out and be an advocate for engineering. How important it is to smash stereotypes, to challenge the status quo, and to inspire and welcome in the next generation of engineers coming behind us. I was incredibly lucky growing up. I had a dad who encouraged me to go out and study and pursue a career in engineering. And I had a mum who had smashed about every stereotype faced by Irish women long before I was even born. So I had that support and that encouragement at home and that belief that I could achieve whatever I wanted. And what I realized was that as the Young Woman Engineer of the Year, 
the IET had given me the opportunity and the platform to go out and give that encouragement and that support and that inspiration to the next generation of engineers who needed to hear it. And I have to admit, I had an absolute blast doing it. <laughs> I got to stand on a stage and teach orbit mechanics to uh, an audience of primary school children at the Royal International Air Tattoo alongside primary engineer. On this very stage, I got to pop some heat shield covered balloons as part of the IET's open house day. I had the absolute privilege of interviewing the wonderful Sir Patrick Stewart talking about Star Trek and how shows like that inspired a whole generation of engineers and innovations. And to close things out, I had the wonderful opportunity of saying goodbye to our previous IET president, Sir Julian Young, who was an incredible support to me throughout the entire year, and also to welcome in our new president, Professor Bob Cryan, who opened the event for us this evening. But of all the things that I took part in last year, I think my favorite things were sitting on the judging panels of the primary engineers, if you were an engineer, what would you do competition, and the IET's Backpack to the Future Challenge. And the reason I enjoyed these so much is that I got to see incredibly creative inventions from children all around the country. And when I started out on this journey a year ago, I said that I hoped that I could inspire the next generation of engineers because I truly believed that we need a more diverse community of engineers in the UK if we're going to create a future that can be the best that it can be for absolutely everyone. And this year showed me just how true that is. Every single child that I met this year was bright, was ambitious, was creative. They had all of the skills that we would love to see in an engineer. But not just that, they also showed an incredible amount of care for our environment and for people less fortunate than themselves. And this shone through in all of the inventions that I saw. Whether it was a solar powered coat that could keep someone warm if they were living without a home, or whether it was a backpack that you could use to feed bees and rescue wildlife. All of these inventions had the hallmarks of incredible ideas that could go on to make the world a better place. And so ultimately, I came away from my year feeling inspired and with absolute confidence that our future is in wonderful hands with these next generation of engineers coming behind us. So, I am so incredibly excited to see what the year brings for all of our finalists here this evening. You are all so talented, so inspirational. You should be so proud to have made it to here and tonight. I hope you enjoy the evening and I really hope you enjoy the year ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kira. I'm sure you'll all agree she's an exceptionally incredible winner and what an incredible year she's had. So thank you so much. Can we give her a last round of applause? <laughs> it's time now to meet our last, but certainly this means by no means the least finalist, Veena Kumari. Cyber threats are on the rise, posing a great risk for us all. One small compromise of your personal data or password, and you could have a serious problem on your hands. That's why the need for security engineers has increased more than ever. As a network and security engineer, I'm deploying the next generational networking technologies within a business environment to protect a series of systems and services for our employees and customers. With growing threats and attacks, it's crucial we keep everyone safe and secure. Growing up, I was an active, practical, curious child, always looking for something to build, something to fix, something to break, anything from flat-packed furniture to a broken door handle. 
I would even pull apart my laptops just to see how it all pieced together and how it actually worked. Curiosity took me on a quest to want to explore the challenges the technical world could offer. I was fascinated by the transfer of data and information and how pretty much everything we rely on in this day and age will use that means of infrastructure. Whether it's connecting to Wi-Fi, uploading a file in the cloud, or something as simple as sending an email. This inquisitive mindset led me in a direction, and the skills I've gained as an engineer have allowed me to work with leading industry professionals and experts in various sectors, including transport, networking services, and IT, of whom I've learned so much. New ways to think, new ways to adopt change, new ways to keep safe. Being a young ethnic female, I know firsthand the imbalance of gender and diversity within the industry. There's not a lot of us. But that's why we need to be out there encouraging more young females, more people who look like me, to break those boundaries and stereotypes. If you even have the slightest interest in a STEM subject, explore it, break the boundaries, be bold, be brave, be confident. It may just be one of the best choices you make. That's another incredible story there. Thank you so much, Vina. So what a fantastic five finalists we have this year. Before the award winners are announced, we'd like to thank the judging panel who all had a very difficult time in the shortlisting this year's candidates and ultimately choosing the award winners tonight. Now every year, the standard of applications is always so impressive and the judges really do have a tough task on their hands. Now on to our next award of the night, which is the Mary George Memorial Prize for Apprentices. It's really difficult to say when you have an African accent. <laughs> this prize was inaugurated in 1985 and is awarded to an outstanding woman engineer apprentice who has made a significant contribution within the workplace and has a passion for inspiring others. I'm delighted to announce that the 2022 Mary George Memorial Prize for Apprentices goes to... I mean, I announced that really early before I got here. <laughs> now I've got to do all of this. Lauren Smith. <laughs> I am so proud to represent my industry. We are so understaffed yeah. <laughs> as clinical engineers and thank you so, so much for giving me this opportunity. Um, thank you. Oh, well, you're an inspiration. Thank you so much. Well done, Lauren. And now we're moving on to our third award of the evening. The Women's Engineering Society Prize, or the WES Prize, as some of you may know it, is prize is donated by the Women's Engineering Society with whom the IET has a long-standing and close working relationship. The prize is awarded to an outstanding woman engineer who is engaging and inspiring young people's in involvement in STEM projects. I'm going to announce this person now. <laughs> the winner of the WES Award goes to Eneni Bambara Abad. <laughs> question I have let's talk about the skirt oh my god this because is an amazing I company. thought it was the bag but now it's the bag and the skirt the blazer died oh it the bla blazer too. ran out of battery <laughs> Now, this is an amazing skirt from Cute Circuit, and they're trying to get more women into tech, but they work with wearable fashion, wearable tech, so. 
That's incredible. <laughs> so how do you feel about winning this award? Do you know what, this is the award I actually resonated with the most because my whole journey in engineering, as you saw, has been really difficult. Yeah. It's been only me. It's yeah. like robotics engineers, any robotics engineers in the room. Um, so I just feel really proud that I can like show other girls that you could actually do this. You could actually be a robotic engineer. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just, I'm in shock, but thank you. Thank you so thank much. much. Thank you, IET. Yeah. Give it up <laughs> I mean, she certainly does make it look cool. <laughs> and finally, we come to the main award of the night, the IET's Young Woman Engineer of the Year Award. Now, this award is given to an exceptional woman, a pioneer, a leader, and an inspiration to all. Let's find out who it is. Ah. Not nervous at all. They get heavier and heavier every time. Okay. <laughs> the winner of the Young Women's Engineer Award goes to Ama from Palm. <laughs> journey um, and thank you all so much for the award. Um, I'm so grateful for my family, uh, my mentors and I'm so sorry I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I'm crying as well. Um, it's but, okay to cry, it is okay, to, you've deserved it. But thank you all so much. It's, um, I learned uh, a quote very recently and it said, if you can't see what you want to be, just be it. Um, and it resonates so much because sometimes um, we say representation matters, but sometimes there's no one to look to. And if you can't find that person, just be it. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. I have no idea why I'm crying, but that was amazing. Now let's not forget our two other incredible finalists, Constance Rudman and Vina Kamari. These incredible women were picked as finalists from a vast array of high quality submissions, which is a truly remarkable achievement in itself. So ladies, can I please ask you to come up on stage and receive your certificates? Give it up one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that just about brings us to this year's ceremony. It's almost the end. Um, but the party certainly doesn't stop here. For those of you who are joining us virtually, you can check out our sponsors' virtual exhibition area and find out about some of the incredible opportunities. We'd also like to thank our dedicated sponsors, without which events and campaigns like this simply
couldn't happen. Their hard work and support to this cause inspires us to put on a great event for all of you each and every year. So please just give them a massive round of applause. So for those of you who are here tonight, please now make your way upstairs for a party and the rest of the evening. And finally, congratulations to all our winners and finalists. You are all incredible, and I hope that you continue to inspire people like you've inspired all of us tonight. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye, everyone.